Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Spirit School. This is happening both on YouTube and on the podcast now. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to bring a new segment that's going to be a regular in Spirit School, the podcast, and Spirit School, the YouTube channel, where I'm going to be bringing on some of our longstanding collective members who I have been able to watch like, you know, develop through the initiation or the collective membership and then thrive into really blooming careers and pathways and bodies of work that I think are unique, diverse, interesting. So these segments highlighting some of the Spirit School collective leaders and incredible members, I hope you will enjoy. I hope that you will find little pieces of your own experiences within their stories and the retellings of their stories. And I'm looking forward to bringing you um, diverse perspectives on spiritual journey. So thank you, Chloe, for being the first to be interviewed. Chloe Hagel, how are you doing here today? Hey, I'm doing so good, Danielle. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited you're here and to have a conversation with you. So I met Chloe for the first time in the initiation and you joined the second cohort out of 10 of the initiation, which was um, January, 2021. So essentially you have been a spirit school student um, since 2021. So I'm curious about, you know, was that your first mediumship training experience? Like did your spirituality unfold through that experience or what? brought you to your spirituality and your spiritual curiosities? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it was my first um, formal mediumship experience that I know of. Um, A lot was going on. A lot of gifts were coming online for me at that time. A lot of awareness. Although like in hindsight, I do see that it's been like my whole life that I've been a very spiritual person, but just not so much... um, yeah, not so much aware of it until that time. I had been formally studying tarot for a while and astrology. And I found, yeah, found your podcast just like synchronistically, algorithmically, and just, yeah, really felt called to, yeah, to sign up for your class because I wanted a more, yeah, more learn a more formal or structured way of connecting in with, um, yeah, with my ancestors. Yeah, I love that. So I was kind of curious about that because I know Chloe more as an astrologer. I've had a couple astrology readings with you. So I was curious if mediumship was a gateway into astrology or if maybe it was the other way. So it sounds like you were doing astrology tarot and then mediumship came into your awareness. Um, So I'm curious if anything surprised you around mediumship training, if it's something that you still love to do or offer, or if it's something that helped you in what you're doing now for spirit. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, At the time, like when I found your podcast, it was late 2020. So there was like a lot of intensity in the collective and I was called to, yeah, look at end of life care or afterlife care, like what happens when you die, like all all of these questions. And um, it is something that I still use in my practice, but I wanted, yeah, I wanted the, the formal structure. So what I loved or what surprised me was you were able to, you know, give us such like practical techniques, but then there was also this like spaciousness and this openness and this like, you know, opportunity for sovereignty that you offer that like, this is how it works for me. This is how my abilities have unfolded, but your, you know, your experience might be different. So for me, it was that perfect blend of like, here's the structure, but it might look different for you. And I was really able to, yeah, to blossom, to bloom in, in that container. Um, I still practice mediumship, although it's pretty seasonal. I feel like autumn and winter are very much the time that I want to do um, all that ancestral work and supporting others with like connecting with their loved ones in the spirit realm and and grief work and all of that. It's very seasonal, but I will now that I have that um, that ability sort of figured out, I very much will receive ancestral messages sometimes when I'm looking at astrology charts. So that is surprising because like once you know the signs and how to connect, I'll be looking at like maybe the fourth house, which is related to ancestors. And then I'll start to, yeah, often receive messages from my astrology sitters, loved ones in the spirit realm. I so love it's that. just amazing. <laughs> I know. And I know that you've been a student of mine for a long time. So like, you know, I always say, like, I do believe the future of mediumship is going to be more multidisciplinary, right? So it is Mm -hmm. worth it for people to spiritually evolve in in many different forms and many different ways. And it's all connected. And so, you know, I was thinking about you actually a couple of weeks ago, because a few years ago in the collective, I taught um, evidential psychism, right? Like using the same 
principles of evidential mediumship is evidential psychic. And then I was like, I made that little placemat where like, here's the areas of life. I'm like, why didn't you use the 12 Zodiac signs? <laughs> like, why didn't you just use the Zodiac chart? Like, <laughs> and I was thinking about that. I'm like, how do I build this out? But yeah, astrology, I love because, you know, from a personal development lens, and I think yeah. every medium could benefit from knowing their like human design archetypes and like their um astrology placements they just kind of mm-hmm. give you little clues into why you may not feel look sound like the next medium it's like it, we're all meant to be a little bit different I think things like that can help highlight your uniqueness um so have you seen through your own development journey um maybe permission slips or deeper levels of self-compassion based off of your astrological placements yeah, it is. It has served me um, it, it, immeasurably, honestly, like I'm always, um, always able to embody deeper self acceptance, like every time I tune into my chart, and it's it's absolutely like a lifelong learning experience. I have, um, yeah, a lot of seemingly oppositional energy or polarities that are active in my chart, but but most people do, or a lot of people do. And just realizing that, you know, it's just, it's just two sides of the same coin. I have like this call to public work, but I also feel like a very private person. Uh, I'm deeply emotional and intuitive, but also like very practical and logical. And yeah, before I was figuring out astrology, it's like, am I crazy? Like, how can I be so (laughs) shy, but so outgoing, but like many of us have that. So yeah, much deeper self-acceptance for sure. Um, Yeah. Just reconciling or or harmonizing all, you know, all our different pieces. It's just been, yeah, been so rewarding. Yeah, I love that. And your astrology has been really eye-opening for me. You know, in that you came to the Sacred Spirit Retreat this last year, you're coming back next year. Thank you for that. And so, you know, in our um, books that we get at the Sacred Spirit Retreat, I create a different book for every single retreat. And like, astrology is always at the center of it. Like, what's your sun, moon rising? Yeah. Like where you at? Because I really do believe that my favorite readings to get are astrology readings. And I think that some of the most accurate readings I've ever had have been astrology readings. And so my first one with you is really healing because, um, you know, I have a seventh house Chiron with Taurus and, you know, I, I was divorced by 22. I eloped with a stranger with the first time I met him when I was 18. Um, I've had just hot messes when it comes to like one-on-one friendships and relationships it's like the biggest kind of struggle I do great in groups I have like a lot of beautiful things in my 11th house um so I do really good group stuff but the one always has been a bit of a sticking point for me and you said something that completely just like opened my horizons and healed something within me around looking at that placement because I've always seen it as like well I just won't have really great friends. Like I just won't have these nurturing, incredible one-on-one relationships. So I am someone who typically keeps my distance in one-on-one settings where it's like, I do great in groups. And I try to like, I don't go all in with people one-on-one because I have so many wounds around it. Right. But then you said something like, um, you're actually meant to heal through your one-on-one relationships. And as soon as I saw it like that, I have to say that these kind of resistances around that one-on-one intimacy, Um, that friendship, I started becoming a lot more open um, and a lot more willing to go deeper with people. Cause I've always felt like, well, you're not going to stick around anyway. So we'll just kind of like go as deep as we do. But then I started seeing like, Ooh, this is an opportunity to break the cycle. This is an opportunity to um, like heal this shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) So that was really, really helpful. The other thing that you did astrologically for me last week, was we celebrated four years as the spirit school collective (laughs) and you were so sweet you were like I should run a chart for the collective and we had to go back and look at the origin date like because yes August 1st 2020 I opened it up to the public but I actually launched the membership July 18th and you held up both charts you're like yes it's for sure July 18th why why was that the date that you picked and I'm just trying to get in the head of an astrologer here yeah, definitely. Um, I did look at both charts and it's so funny, like the first one, which was just like more like the soft launch or the opening for the initiation members um, had like the Cancer Sun and Cancer Moon. And that's like very much like private. And then a few weeks later, 
when it opened to the public, the chart, that chart had like a Leo sun and a Capricorn moon, which is like all about like public work and showing up. So there are so many like energetic signatures I could see in that later chart as well. Like there's definitely, I don't know, some, some truth to it. I could say like, I could, I could read that chart as well too, but I just had to call it. And I figured like it was open for the initiation members first. It wasn't like it didn't exist. It wasn't like it didn't open. So I just went for the first date for that reason, because yes, there was that like in between time, but as long as people open the very, as long as it was open and the very first people to come in the initiation members, I, I, I went with that for, yeah, for that reason. Cause it was, it was the first chart, but I could see like definitely signatures for both like that public and private thing that like so many of us um yeah are balancing really yeah and I have to say like if like attracts like I cannot believe how many cancer placements I yeah <laughs> like <laughs> and I only have a cancer north node right yeah yeah um, and you know something else too that you kind of brought through because I've always been really tripped up about my cancer north node right mm, Where, like, mm -hmm. I always seen it just in my maybe unsophisticated way, because I'm not an astrologer, I'm an astrology enthusiast, but I don't have the memory retention to be an astrologer. I think that memory, lack of memory retention helps me in my mediumship. Because yeah. <laughs> um, We're definitely not recalling previous knowledge here, but I would say that like, you know, I've always seen my cancer on earth node as being um, picking family over work. I don't know mm. why I've just always seen it like that. Um, but recently, because it's in its ninth house, you said something one time in a class where you were like, I can't believe how well you're living your North node in cancer. Yeah. And I will tell you in my lunar node return, which only happens every 18 years, I know is when I quit my job, I knew I had 18 months, yes. these changes. Yes. And I really did back in the day, see it as like, I'm picking family over career. But then I ended up in a career that was more all encompassing than even the nine to five, right? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm you know? Yeah. It's, um, cancer is, is family for sure. It is your home and your lineage and your ancestry, but it's also like sanctuary and cycles and creating and holding safe spaces for people. And being that, you know, cancer, a water sign is very intuitive and related to ancestry. Like for me, cancer is like the mediumship sign mm -hmm. so that you have like a mediumship development circle, a community focused around mediumship, the ninth house being like philosophy and learning, like you bring, bring that in beautifully. And the, um, yeah, the gifts of your South node in Capricorn, like make a business about it. You can't not do that. Like that's the perfect blend of, of harmonizing that axis. I would say we can't leave the South node behind, nor should we, but you know, these are the gifts that we come in with. So that soul growth towards those Cancerian themes, but, you know, using some of those Capricorn gifts at the same time, it's just, yeah. So beautiful how you do that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I've learned a lot from you through the astrology. Um, one other thing that I noticed about you, so we've been lucky to have Chloe, I get asked in town in Squamish, it's a pretty small town, to come do readings at different events. Um, I don't do those type of events anymore. I haven't for many, many years. But one thing I do is I bring in collective members to come provide readings for the Squamish public. Um, th this is the bespoke market I'm talking about. And so you have mm -hmm. come now to do readings at Spirit School and Psychic Fairs, and you've come to do readings like on the train at the bespoke market on behalf of Spirit School. So my trust in you is um, goes without saying how much I trust you in this work, but you know, what, what makes you sustain this path in the service work that you do? Because it's not for the faint of heart. We know it's not easy. We mm. know it takes a lot of self-awareness, a lot of continuous healing and looking at ourselves. And, you know, it's, it's not for the faint of heart, but you've done it so beautifully and you've been doing it since, as long as I've known you and you've grown even more into it. So like, what has your career projection been like, and where do you feel like you're going? Ah, thank you. Yes. Um, continuous development keeps me going, like always learning, um, always expanding, having, you know, connections like the people I, I met through the collective that sustains me as well. Um, being respectful and honoring the cycles that I go through and understanding that we are very seasonal and cyclical people. And well, I mean, all beings are, but just, yeah, having some respect and honoring that, like, you know, going when I need to go, resting when I need to rest, like really trusting, trusting that. Um, 
where I'm serving right now is astrology classes and one-on-one -on -one readings. Um, I also host a monthly women's circle. It's like a mutual aid project. It's been going on for a year and a half. We are reading women who run with the wolves mm -hmm. and it's almost done. So I'm going to be pivoting to more of like, yeah, astrological classes or astrological circles, like probably something with lunar living, um, or the moon. I'm super into that, but, um, yeah, having this container where we're able to, like the woman who wrote this book, she is a Jungian psychologist. So these experiences are very like archetypal feminine or archetypal human experiences. So when we read it together and we share, we're able to like, yeah, transmute it, the wisdom into healing. And um, I get a lot, a lot from that as well, too. But that is where I'm currently serving in like a circle capacity. And then I also do... Um, do tarot readings. It's funny. I'm getting more into like, it was very much like tuning into the higher self, like psychological. And I'm growing more into like maybe some like fortune telling even like at first I was like, no, no, like you can't tell a fortune with tarot, like very critical, very discerning, but I'm expanding more into, um, yeah, like lots of like forecasting and predictive stuff as well too. So yeah, it's, um, it's an exciting time. I'm working with the modalities I've worked with for years, but finding new ways to, um, yeah, new ways to evolve. And yeah, I'm going to be teaching some astrology classes in the Spirit School Collective um, starting next month too. So super honored for that and so excited that that's going to be happening. Yes, yes, yes. So Chloe, we're, we're really building out the collective, like, there's gonna be so many monthly things. We've had Christy Yale doing monthly human design readings, because that's what yeah. the collective members were talking about. I think yeah, we, she's we amazing. did one of those conversations, where you're like, are there other like six twos, or I don't remember. What yeah, were, but I think it was the same line <laughs> I am. And I get confused. Yes, with design, even in comparison to astrology, I find astrology to be much more accessible to me. But I yeah. still love the wisdom of human design. So 100%. Same, same. I you know, can't quite get the basics but that's why like I love Christie's classes yeah I do too and I mean you always got to look at the origins of things too <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> how did you start and like there, there's some questions there I have but we'll for say sure that. yeah <laughs> but I will say that I have had some great sessions and I love the way Christy Yale breaks it down. So we're doing those monthly. They've gone really well. So I've asked Chloe to come into the collective to do monthly astrology lessons because I can't teach that. People are obviously interested in it and I talk about it a lot. And so we're really excited starting in September. Chloe will be coming in to do monthly astrology lessons. So thank you for bringing that wisdom in for us. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. There was something that you were talking about I wanted to bring into um around the friendships that you've made for sure because that's something that I've seen you do really well and you have a core group of collective members that I think we're all started around 2021 2022 join the membership and mm -hmm. um you know I know that you guys like shared a room at the retreat and it goes even beyond that but it's been beautiful for me to watch these relationships flourish from people who have met in the collective and you guys have been friends for years now and you guys go to events together you sit in circles together you attend each other's like events and I mean what has that been like for you and you know has that filled up a lot of your life like the friends that you've met through the collective yeah I have like had a similar experience given that my son is in the seventh house. So for me, it's an area that I can evolve in and friendships have not, um, not always come, come easy to me. And sometimes I feel like my social capacity being that I am so, so sensitive. I don't necessarily have like a huge social capacity <laughs> and I could be like definitely a slow, a slow burn in friendships for sure. But through the different, um, yeah, like classes I've taken, it seems like I always come away with, um, yeah, the, the different classes that you have taught and being in the membership, I always seem to come away with like one really close friend. And then like over the years, I've been able to, um, yeah, to build that up through your like setting up our mini masterminds and the calling, like I was able to connect in with people there or yeah, through the initiation and different, different classes and programs. So yeah, like there's, there's something about um, the people that you attract and we're able to, um, you know, have different values, have different beliefs, but we're able to, yeah, come together with these, yeah, these, this common goal of um, 
of wanting to connect in with others and yeah, being open on the development path. So I just, yeah, have met the most wonderful people through your membership, through your programs. And um, yeah, it's just, it's funny looking back now. I have like so many friends from the group and we do get to, yeah, do some things in person and, you know, support each other's work and that sort of thing. So I don't know how you do it, but you attract like the most amazing members and students. <laughs> I've always said that because I've attended mediumship development stuff. I mean, since I was 30, you know, I'm like 42, 43 now. So it's like, you know, for a while now, and I can see how lucky I am. I just seem to attract some really high level, grounded, spiritual, humanitarian type people, which I think is really important to me. And I want to say to you one thing I really wanted to ask you about, and I don't know this about you personally, it's mm -hmm. just something that I recognize. And I think that we both share this, um, is like, we both have real big social justice hearts, right? Mm -hmm. Accessibility, equality. This is something we're both incredibly passionate about. Now, I credit my social justice heart to Tupac. <laughs> <And> <laughs> For honestly, sure. His music growing up, I mean, I, he literally woke me up to social injustices when I was a yeah. teenager. And so, like, this has been in my awareness through the music of Tupac, which is why I talk about him every single freaking day of my life. But, yeah. um, you know, where does that come up for you? And, like, what would you love to see in the spiritual space to make it more humanitarian based and more, I don't know, accessible, fair? What would you looking for? What's the big dream? Yeah. Wow. That's such a big question. Um, yeah. People don't necessarily realize how like militant Tupac was. Um, I definitely see him as like an ascended master type person energy for sure. Um <laughs> You don't have to say that just because of me. No kidding. <laughs> no, that's like, I remember the early days of listening to your podcast and I'll try to remember to answer your question, but what's coming up for me is like, yeah, you had, you gave some examples and I just like, I was really resonating. Like you said something like, you know, some of the angel cards were a bit corny and like you were loving Tupac and you have some like intuition from the dad side of the family. And I was just, yeah, really, I don't know, really saw myself in, in the things that you shared, but um. Yeah, it's, it's just so funny. You never know what's going to like hook hook someone in. And the people in the collective, there's like, yeah, there's no competition. Um, we all just like want to support each other and, you know, see each other do well. And I don't know how, yeah, how there's none of that, like co that, that competition, which I think is so, um, yeah, prevalent in, in spiritual spaces or in an ego and in development spaces. Right. Um, but yeah, for me, keeping things accessible is, is definitely um, a top value, a top priority for me. I mean, we're all all a work in progress. So definitely, um, you know, progress, not perfection, right? Like just, just keep going and try to embody our values the best that we can. Um, I have like an interesting axis in my astrology where I have the Aquarius sun and Leo rising. So there's a lot of like ego and power that I embody, but then also like responsibility and altruism. So um, yeah, using that, that power for, for good is important to me. Um, I do think that things are getting more accessible for sure. Um, just in the time that like, you know, I've been developing and I've been, yeah, really invested in spirituality. I can see that there's a lot of options, um, you know, that aren't, aren't just cults. Right. Um, but it's yeah, hashtag, like <laughs> hashtag, right. Hashtag. Not yeah. <laughs> well, we, we accept so many different types of people. It's just such a dynamic group. So I don't think we're ever going to be be a cult because you don't have to fit this, you know, this cookie cutter mold, but yeah, you've definitely been a model for me with your, um, you know, your reparation pricing or sliding scale, accessible pricing. Um, yeah, not getting like out of hand when it comes to things like that. Cause it can be, you know, it can be difficult when you talk about like charging your worth and like uh -huh. thinking yeah. about like, how much am I able to influence someone's transformation and like how much will their life be enriched if they actually take my advice? So like, yeah, like are sessions worth hundreds of thousands of dollars? I don't know. They could be, but like, it's more important to be, 
yeah, like accessible because then you can reach more people too, right? So having that, I appreciate you have that range of offerings, like some higher ticket stuff, of course, but then, you know, the the podcast um, and the membership and like some really, yeah, really accessible offerings too. So I think that's something that we can do that's important is just making sure you have that range of, um, yeah, of accessibility and the offerings, not just, not just high ticket, even though it's all super high value. And there's, yeah, there's nuance there too, because, you know, if someone follows your guidance and changes their life, then yeah, I mean, it is worth a million dollars. I don't know. I'm not going to say it's not, <laughs> but we can't be charging that because then we can't help as many people. Right. So I know that, that's been my thing <laughs> is, um, from going from stage fright to going into, you know, business mentorship space. Yeah. Which, just need one twenty thousand dollar client, and I'm like, but I want to talk to twenty people. <laughs> For I don't sure. want to just talk to one person. I would get yeah. very bored very quick, and you know, I haven't done one on one work for a couple of years, other than you know the readings that I do that are mostly pro bono, but. You know, I appreciate you saying that. And that's something that I just see in you too. And I know pseudo we've talked about a couple of times in the collective, right? Um, and so I'm I'm excited to see where your area, where your work takes you with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so I wanted to bring that in and I'll just ask you two more quick questions before we wrap up this interview. And you of know, course. I know this is your first time being interviewed on a podcast. So thank yeah. you. You're phenomenal. <laughs> You're doing phenomenal. Um, I really sprung this on my members last week where I was like, I want to interview you on the podcast. I think you just booked this Friday. <laughs> You're like the first one in. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I really like to ask people and this kind of is inspired by Oprah, I will admit, yes. but you know, looking back at, you know, what you know now, like you've been on this path a little while, you've gone through dark nights, you've returned mm -hmm. to the light, you've found brighter forms of yourself for sure. You know, what would you tell your day one self? Like what piece of advice would you say to day one Chloe on the spiritual adventure? Wow. Yeah. Um, that is such a big question. I do. I do think it goes back to trusting your intuition and allowing like the, the flow of those cycles for it to be sustainable. You have to have, have to have periods of growth and, and rest and that's all evolution and that's all healing. So for me, that's yeah. Being in tune with the cycles of nature, my seasons, it supports me so much. Um, so like, yeah, tr trusting that we all have like a different, you know, different seasons and cycles, right? If I see someone else, um, that's not necessarily, you know, how, how I need to be and very much like, yeah, honoring this life, honoring this experience. I'm a very like ritualistic person as well too. So anything that I can ritualize, I will. And just, yeah. Um, having the courage to be like optimistic mm -hmm. as well. That's like a big thing that I'm going through right now that it takes a lot of courage to be, to be optimistic. So um, yeah, that's a, that's a really big question. Yeah. That's a fantastic <laughs> answer. You know, like that's a really fantastic answer. It does take courage to be um, optimistic. It really does. And you know, I think that's one thing that I wanted to make more accessible in the spiritual space is like not avoiding reality and like, you know, like watching everything, but then right. also knowing like when to be a dreamer, like when to like, yeah, just, you know, when I was really struggling with the school, when I first kind of like built it, I kept getting this, um, repetitive word coming up in my mind, law of assumption, law of assumption, mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. even heard of that before. And when I finally looked it up, I'm a bit of a slow study. I'm like, yeah, I guess I could just lean into assumption that everything will work out as it will. And, and that's as far as I could get, as far as my positivity, because it was going through like a real dark night at the time, but yeah. it takes intention. It takes a choice. Like you say, to lean into that, even when life is not all sparkly all around. So mm -hmm. I like that you phrased it like that, the courage and trusting yourself. Um, I agree. Trusting your intuition. So um, my final question is, you know, how can people keep in touch with you? You, you know, you have your reading that you did for the collective up on your YouTube. So you mm -hmm. have, have Instagram, if you want to drop those for people to see, um, would love for you to drop that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can find me on Instagram and on YouTube at Chloe Oracle, Chloe.Oracle. And um, also find my classes in, in the collective coming soon. But that's where I'm most present right now um, is on YouTube and Instagram. So you can find me there. Yes. Thank you for coming on, Chloe. Yay. Thanks for having me, Danielle. Awesome.